Hello, I'm Gavin. Welcome to Knowledge Hub. Today we're going to go through what's going to be expected of you during your EV assessment. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is a basic cable design. It's not an in-depth cable design. It's pretty much a straightforward cable design because if you're going to install any EV point, you're going to need to get the cable there. You're going to need to make sure it's the right size cable so it disconnects under ADS conditions. And you're going to need to think about voltage drop. You know, how far away is that cable from the fuse board? So voltage drop is a big thing as well. So what I'm going to do now is go for a very simple cable design, nothing too much at all. We're not getting involved with the abiotic equation, nothing that fun, okay? Just something nice and simple. So let's start off with a, a little uh, bit of maths about the calculation. Let's say we have a load. Um, let's say it's a nine kilowatt load. So it's nine kilowatt. Okay, so we'll write that down. We'll write down nine kilowatt. So we have nine and then the K and then the watt. So we have nine kilowatt. So first thing we need to do first of all is actually work out how many watts that is. And hopefully most of us know the K's were a thousand as if you was driving kilometers, that would be a thousand meters. So when we say nine kilowatt, we actually mean that is 9,000 watts. So now we have got that into what we call the standard SI unit, standard SI unit. So we have 9,000 watts of power being drawn from the supply. Now what else do we know about the supply in the UK? We know the frequency, okay, that's 50 hertz. We also know the voltage, don't we? The voltage in the UK is 230. Okay, 230 volts. So using physics and the simple power triangle, we come up with this, PIV. So we have power at the top, amps down here, and voltage to the right. So if we put the figures we had from the example we're doing of nine kilowatt, we put the 9,000 at the top, we put the voltage here, and then when they're on top of each other, we simply divide them. So that would be 9,000 divided by 230 will give us our missing figure of the amps. Okay, so we work that out. That gives us 39.1 amps. So now we know our design current, we call this IB in electrical chat, our design current is 39.1 amps. Well now we need to decide what size circuit breaker we're gonna put that on. Well, we have to put on a circuit breaker that's bigger than that. That just makes sense, you know. We wouldn't put that on a 32 amp circuit breaker, would we? Because it's just going to trip. So, for a 39.1 amp load, it makes perfect sense to put that on a 40 amp breaker. And that's what we do. We do that just as standard. We know that. That's in our heads. But it's actually written down in a mathematical formula That is IB, which is a design current, is smaller or equal to IN, which is the size of the breaker. As I say, we know that and we do that as standard. Okay? So a 39 amp load will go on a 40 amp breaker. Now, what kind of breaker? You know, that's what we need to think about as well. What kind of circuit breaker are we going to use in a domestic setting in your house? Well, it's going to be a B-type, okay? Uh, we very rarely use C-types, and I, I wouldn't think anyone would use a D-type in, in somebody's house. You know, that's going to be for X-ray machines and big industrial equipment. So it's going to be a B-type circuit breaker. So we can say so far we're going to use a 40-amp B-type circuit breaker to protect our cable. Now we need to decide what size cable we're going to use. So we need to take... To pick a cable that can take more than the 40 amps. So that will be our next job. So we got to the point we decided that we're using a 40 amp circuit breaker. 
So we need to take uh, to pick a cable that can take more than the 40 amps of the circuit breaker. That means the cable will be protected by the circuit breaker. The circuit breaker will disconnect before the cable starts to burn. Okay. So to do this, we look in our big bumper book of fun, our BS7671, which I've got mine here. It's never far away from me. Okay, and we have a chart in here. We have a number of charts on current carrying capacity. They will be in Appendix 4 in the back of your uh, bumper book of fun. As I said, the BS7671. Okay, now we've got a breaker of 40, so our IN is 40. So we need a cable that can take more than that. I'm going to use SWA. All right, it's just it's standard for me to use SWA for a vehicle charger for mechanical impact. Um, you know, you could say, well, I could get away with using PVC, PVC in some circumstances. Um, but really, wherever this is, there's going to be a car. So, and wherever there's a car, there's a chance of mechanical impact. So I would always use SWA. Um, for a vehicle charger. If you're going outside with the cable, then it's got to be SWA really in, in, in most respects, okay? So we're using SWA. We've got a circuit breaker of 40 amp, so I need to pick a cable that can take more than 40 amp. So if I look through my chart, I'm looking through table 4E4A. Now I'm looking at one core cable, single phase, AC or DC, and I've gone down and I can see that a four mil cable clip direct, because I'm going to keep this simple, I'm going to clip it direct, I'm not going to bury it or anything like that. No correction factors, nothing too complicated here. So if we look at a four mil clip direct, it can take up to 49 amps. So we've, only, we've got a 40 amp circuit breaker. So therefore, I can use the four mil. I'm quite happy to use the four mil. So let's say we're using the four mil. Okay, we've decided the, the, uh, the cable can take it. So now what we've got to do is work out whether the voltage drop will be a problem because think how far away this charger or any charger will be from the point the electricity comes in. The further away we are, the more volts we're losing because we're pushing through that cable. You know, it's like a long pipe. You have a long pipe, you put water through it. By the time it gets to the end, it's only going to be a dribble. So we need to think about volt drop, and it's, it's very important for electrical vehicle charging. Any circuit, really, volt drop's important. So let's work that out. We decided to use four mil cable. Um, let's say the vehicle is 30 meters away from the um, main incoming supply. Quite a distance, but I just wanted to illustrate a point. Okay, so we use four mil. So, we got four mil. Now to work out volt drop, the formula is millivolts per amp per meter times the IB. Remember the IB is a design current. And then times the length of the circuit. Now we have to divide the whole thing by 1000. So we decided to use four mil armored. So I'm going to turn the page and that will give me the voltage drop of that cable. So I look through the book, I've gone down to 4 mil and it says it drops 12 millivolts per amp per meter. So we write that in the equation. So that's going to be the first bit, that's the 12, that's the millivolts per amp per meter. Then we times it by the design current. So I'm going to put 39.1 in there. And then I said it's 30 meters long, didn't I? Okay, as an example. So this is just a bit of fun. We're just doing this just to see what the answer is. So let's work it out. So I've got 12 times the 39.1 times the distance of 30. Now I'm going to press equals now and then divide by the thousand afterwards, okay? So I've done that. Then I've divided by 1,000 and it gives me a figure of 14.076 volts, that is. 14.076 volts. Well, I know personally that that's fouled. Now, why is it fouled? We need to know why that is a foul. Well, our book, 
BS7671 tells us what the maximum figure of voltage drop is for power as well as light, lighting. Well, we're using power, okay? Now, again, you'll find this in Appendix 4. Appendix 4 is the, the most fun bit of the book, in my opinion. Uh, so let's turn to page 383 in our big bumper book of fun. It gives us a little chart there. Okay. Table 4AB, voltage drop. And it says the maximum we're allowed for lighting is 3%, and the maximum we're allowed for other uses, so that's power, sockets, our EV point, etc., is 5%. What we need to do is to work out what 5% of 230 is. So we simply do 5% times 230 volts. That comes back 11.5 volts as the maximum we can have. Well, when we done our calculation earlier, we worked out it's 14 for that 4 mil. So therefore, we can't use the 4 mil. We have to go up and use the 6 mil. Now, in reality, are we going to do this in real life? Probably not. I'd probably just whack in a 6 mil with standard, as you do for a cooker. You know, you whack in a 6 mil. You can probably get away with a 4 mil. But we use 6 mils, you know. We make our life easier. Before your assessment, whoever's assessing you is going to need to see this working out. It's part of the sitting guild's requirement that you can design a cable from start to finish, okay? Only basic, as I said, no, no abiotic equation, no correction factors, just a, a straightforward cable design. So we worked out four mil isn't good enough because we've dropped too much voltage. So now we need to move up to six mil, okay? So we go back to the book, we work, look at the figure that we've got for six mil, and for six mil, the voltage drop per meter is 7.9. So let's do 7.9 times the design current, which was 39.1, times the length, which we said was 30 meters, and again, all divided by 1,000. Okay, and that comes back at 9.2 volts. Okay, so our six mils okay. So that will be expected of you to use the, the uh, equation to work out the voltage drop of your cable for the design. All right, so from the beginning, you've worked out IB, which is your design current. Then you've picked an IN, which is the size of your breaker. We've said we're going to use a B type, because that's just standard for domestic, a B type circuit breaker. So you know that as a 60898, most probably. Um, then we've said we're going to use, we started off trying to get away of a 4 mil to save a bit of money. Um, we worked it out, we realised we couldn't use 4 mil, so then we went up to 6 mil. We worked out the voltage drop for 6 mil, and we worked out we can get away with a 6 mil cable. Okay, So that's a simple cable design that will be expected of you for your EV course. Thank you for watching the video and if you like, please subscribe and hit the notification button.